there's a saying that like you overestimate what you can do in a year and you underestimate what you could do in a decade. And it's so true. I think we have more stories about suffering than succeeding. Yeah, like... Uh... Also, I was checking a couple of videos yesterday, like uh, Tim Ferriss, Tom Bileview, like mm. these, these guys. And they said that the best skill they have, that they should, their superpower, is the ability to suffer. Mm. Like, uh, they can outwork anyone, and that's what makes them what they are. And, uh, and that's what we were talking downstairs before, like, is the, is the same principle. Is the same idea of... of Going yep. through the pain, mm. going through that barrier to make it happen to whatever yeah, cause it you Because it gives you the, I think a lot of new entrepreneurs go in it and they're like, watch a webinar. And say, okay, I'm going to start drop shipping and then I'm going to make six figures and then that's cool, right? A lot of people go in with that. Um, and that can happen, but you have to have such a different mindset going in that, right? So you have to have, you know, if you're, if you're already five years doing something in business similar, and then you do it, then you do the dropshipping course, and you're like, okay, then it... Now it makes sense. Now it makes sense. But the, like the first four, five, six years are just shit. Like I know a lot of, uh, when I went in, um, in business, first was Amazon, but then I started a sourcing agency, and that was basically just like another job. Like the sourcing agency, that wasn't a business. It was me doing the work, working, okay, I was working with freelancers, but it was just like a project manager, manager but I had to, I didn't get a salary, so... And I think a lot of people go in it with it like that because it's so different, so difficult to balance like short term, long term. Because short term you gotta survive, but you also need to do something now that yield big results in the future, right? And I went either extreme long term and didn't have enough money in the short term, or I went extreme short term and was was just like a job, months after months after months, and nothing, no value got created or accumulated. <laughs> Yeah, that ability to to first balance things and, and, and what I was saying before, like uh, the word effectiveness and efficiency, once that I discovered those... Like, the 80-20. 80-20, Pareto principle. 20% of the efforts give you 80% of the results, mm. average. But uh, after discovering that, my life changed. Like uh, It was a totally different game. Mm. And that's something that I consider key and a key element to succeed in anything you do in life. Oh, it's either you go through the pain process and you discover by yourself that the, what are the most effective things that you need to do to make the most of it. Mm. And then there are many ways to discover. One is to, to learn about it. To, I mean, of course, learn about it, but how? Through experience, through pain through books, through mentoring, through many other ways. Mm. And uh, we discover it through pain. <laughs> <laughs> pain and books, the mentors came in later, but even with mentorship, it's still pain, you know. I think it's just something people need to solve. It's just like building your, it's like building an opportunity muscle. I feel like, you know, like when, you, when, you're, when you're broke, when you really need the money, you look around, you find opportunity. Like there's like, you think about something you wouldn't have thought about. like. Uh, I, I remember I called people that who had a bad experience with me working previously, but now I needed money. I was like, shit, what do I do? So I called all of the good people, and the good people, I couldn't sell them. So I called the bad people, the one that were like, that I fucked up, right? <laughs> and uh, I was like, hey, appreciate, like, okay, whatever happened before, appreciate the call, blah, 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 let's do something, right? And I made a sale to someone that previously we fucked up, but I was never have seen the opportunity that is possible if I wouldn't have been that broke or needing the cash, right? So then looking forward, when you actually succeed, you, you kind of build a radar for all these opportunities that seem unavailable if you're like, if you haven't experienced the pain. Because only if when you like with the, with the back against the wall, then you go through these things, then you do it. If not, like why the fuck you call? You know, like, <laughs> you, no you don't do these to things. Call somebody that you are not in good yeah. terms. Yeah, so it's like building building a muscle, right? It's like going to the gym. You build your muscles, and it, it takes pain to do it. But eventually, when the muscle is there, you can lift heavy, right? And it's the same. I think it's the same with this and the ability to, yeah, the ability to suffer. That's very true. <laughs>
<laughs> to go through the pain, like the same as the gym. Mm -hmm. Like the first week is horrible, second week is horrible, third week is horrible, until ninth month horrible. Then when you see the results, that you see addictive. the benefits, yeah. and then you are used to, and then you are like you have the ability to feel pain. Mm -hmm. Because every time that you go and you train harder, it Your will, body adapts. you know, break the fibers and will make pain. And then that was the, the, the effect. Right. That, that's the, the necessary thing to make it grow until yeah. that it doesn't hurt anymore. So, yeah, like, uh, <laughs> for example, for all the coaches, for all the, the people that were training, the mm. employees, like, I would love to to give them like more chances, but you know it's also important for them to take it. Yeah, yeah. To, to hit prove them in the themselves face that they can suffer and be worthy of that, mm. whatever they're looking for. Right, and when they suffer too much, we can always lift them up. We can always exactly. like help them so they don't drown, right? <laughs> um, but like we can let them suffer to see where like how far they can go, and the tolerance of pain just just raises, right? Um, and I also think it builds confidence, right? Like yeah. when you when you, um, like, because now you know it's gonna be okay. You know, when you've been hit so many times, the first thing you get hit is like, you think it's the end of the world, right? And you're like, fuck, I don't know, you know, don't know how to pay the employees, and it's like, it's a horrible feeling, right? But then eventually you're like, okay, I have salaries coming up, end of the month, now is fifth, fifth of the month, whatever. I'm like, oh, I don't know how to pay, pay employees. Now, it's, now we don't freak out because we're like, okay, Something's going to happen one of the months, we have payments come in, we do something, and we, we're going to earn some more money somehow. We do it. Because yeah. now it's confidence months after months after months, year after year, right? So you build that, and then it's all right, you know? Where before it was like, you freak out. <laughs> well, I don't have to pay rent. <laughs> <laughs> yes. What I'm going to do. Right. <laughs> yeah, so that's a lesson for everyone. Just embrace the pain it will get better just takes time but we always think it just takes we underestimate that there's a saying that like you overestimate what you can do in a year and you underestimate what you can do in a decade and it's so true like in a year we always like, oh i'm gonna do this and this and this and you have like the whole thing for the year and it, of course it doesn't happen and then for a decade you're like you set a goal but you can do unimaginably more, more than you thought of in the in the decade. And so. more at Shenzhen speed and the and the things that we this this the path and the speed yeah. that we're going every day. Yeah. That uh, China have something that have built on us that mm. we are. I'm very thankful for that, and I, I guess that you feel similar or the same way. Yeah. That the experiences and the entrepreneurship and the lifestyle and the possibilities and opportunities that are here mm. are on another level. Speed speaking, money speaking, uh, position and, and, and opportunity wise. You yeah. have factories here, you have companies that are built from one day to the other worth million dollars because yeah. they have the capabilities and the right people next to them and the, the speed mm. that the, the China has. That here. And wow. also 80-20 is kind of around you here. Like China is 80-20. Is this is all they do. Yeah. They're like, don't make it perfect, don't make it pretty. They just like, blah, go and make it. Do what needs to be done. And then they adjust. Right? Make money, later we fix the, what's going yeah. on, what happens. <laughs> later we fix everything, yeah. First we build and we fix. There's like I saw a, saw a picture the other day. There was like a guy skydiving, and he was he was I don't know a couple hundred meters up looking down, and he had like a manual step three how to land. <laughs> and it's you know and it's kind of like that. Like you just go, you fly, and then you do it. But I, it's it's so hard not to overthink it. You know, a lot of people go in and like want to figure a everything out. Example. Yeah. <laughs> That's a perfect. We should example. frame that, hang that somewhere in the, in the company. Right. I, will, I, will I saw that somewhere, we have to look for it. <laughs> I will find it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so true. But also that's part of the misconception that the Western world or our world have from China. Because the thing that we receive from there, were the, like, I guess in South America, for example, because we live in a very cheap uh, mindset, everything has to be cheap, economies are not so good, so mm. we tend to buy the from China. Uh, as, as the rest of the world, but we are like majority of, of the things that we buy. So the misconception is that the things that you buy from China were very bad. 
because you have this kind of from the other side from china perspective is like where we sell I heard that in South America, they buy a lot of cheap stuff. Yeah, so let's, let's make a lot of cheap, cheap stuff. stuff. <laughs> and how you do it? You break things. You yeah. do the cheapest thing. And to do the cheapest thing, you do it fast. You do it, you do it fast and you ship cheap. So the quality, of course, it will not be good. But that's but, what people want. It. Yeah. yeah. And, and what happens that the evolution of 10 years, 15 years, 20 years China, that now they went through that process of breaking stuff and now they're like, okay, now I understand. Now I have money. Mm. Now I understand the market. Now I have the clients, the ones that remain buying the cheap stuff. Right. And, and now let's try to do good things. Now let's try to make big brands. Now let's mm. try to, you know, to, to do something proper because now we can afford to. Right. With a different mindset, with a different perspective, with different environment. You see how China grow. Now the things are changing. Mm. And lucky that we're here to experience it from this side. Yeah, man, I'm so glad. I wasn't glad for it for a long time, but then since COVID and like when you're forced to be here, when you can't leave, like that was for me the shift of like just seeing the opportunities here instead of looking everywhere else, like how much, how, how, looking at how much better some things are than here. When now I can focus on everything that is better here, which is so much more than, than, than everywhere the bad else. Things, like... Man, I'm happy. I'll stay for a long, long, long time. We we'll definitely good. live here forever. Back and forth, of course. Yeah. But, uh, yeah I love you.